Welcome back. In this video, we are going to uh, go ahead and design a DC biasing network for an MOS transistor. Um, and so we um, have assumed a four resistor biasing network uh, powered from a dual supply, uh, plus minus five volts. And basically designing the biasing network for a quiescent drain current, drain to source current of half a, half a milliamp, 0.5 milliamps. Um, and we have been given a number of transistor parameters, such as the threshold voltage being 2 volts, um, the process transconductance parameter, Km prime, uh, as 80 microamps per volt squared, uh, length and width are 1 and 4 micrometers, um, respectively, and then we're asked to neglect the channel length modulation effect by uh, setting lambda equal to 0. Uh, so in order to design my, BC, my DC biasing network, what I'm essentially doing is selecting the values of those resistors, R1, R2, RD, and RS, uh, in order to set the quiescent current to 0.5 milliamps, uh, but also to set the right conditions for the transistor to be in saturation, if later I am planning to use this transistor in a linear amplifier. Uh, so I will start my step na number one. I'm going to go ahead and find the value of VGS that I need to set in order to have a drain current of 0.5 milliamps. Uh, because as we have seen in the saturation region, the drain current is related to the VGS voltage only, um, as one half of Kn uh, times VGS minus Vt squared. Kn is related to, to K prime, as follows, this is one half of mu n C oxide with divided by length Bgs minus Vt squared. Now I have written my, my ID in terms of, you know, the overall value of ID, which is correct because in here I just have a uh, DC values and DC sources, therefore um, all of my drain current will just be the DC component. But in order to get used to just, you know, when we're calculating the, uh, the DC biasing network, using exclusively uh, the, the DC notation, I'm going to go ahead and use that. So I'm going to say my DC drain current is equal to that, and I'm going to also use the DC um, GS voltage. Uh, all right, so now it's a matter of substituting values and solving for VGS. I want 0.5 milliamps, so 0.5 milli equals one half. Uh, my Km prime is 80 microamps per volt squared. So um, um, I could just write 0 0.08 milli. Width of length will be uh, 4 over 1. It doesn't matter whether I write the units or not because they're going to cancel out. Um, and so BGS minus 2 volts squared. All right, and now I can uh, solve for BGS and I get that BGS is equal to 3.77 volts. So this is the value of VGS that is going to yield a current of 0.5 milliamps. Um, step number two is I'm going to need to select uh, my resistor values so that I can apportion my voltage um, between RD, the drain to source of M1 and RS. And so select RD, RS, and uh, or perhaps just those to partition um, available supply voltage. And the idea is I have uh, an overall 10 volts of supply, PDD minus VSS, um, and I will want to have part of that voltage associated with resistor RD or dropping across resistor RD 
part of that voltage dropping across resistor RS and part of that voltage um, across the drain to source of transistor M1. Now, the one restriction that I have is I need for VDS to be greater than uh, or equal to, but hopefully greater than, so I'm not on the edge of saturation, VGS minus VT. So that's one of my constraints. Um, and then other constraints will depend on the particular circuit configuration that I have. Let's imagine that I am going to take my output voltage at the drain of this transistor. Typically, in order to get maximum output voltage swing, I will want to center uh, that voltage, if that's what I'm taking my output, between the two supplies, roughly. Um, so, I'm going to say VDD minus VSS is equal to VRD, or I should say minus minus VSS, since that's the way I have labeled my VSS there. plus VRD, plus VDS, plus VRS. Again, for saturation, I want my uh, VDS to be greater than VGS minus VT. VGS needs to be 3.77. VT is 2 volts, so I need my VDS to be greater than uh, 1.77 volts. So. VDS greater than 3.77 minus 2 equals 1.77 volts. Um, and so I'm going to choose conservatively VDS equals 3 volts. And that means that out of a total of 10 volts, uh, VDD minus, minus VSS, uh, I am using 3 volts um, across the drain to source of transistor M1, and so I have 7 remaining volts to be distributed between RD and RS. Uh, and the way I'm going to distribute them is I'm going to go ahead and center my drain voltage, for example. So, um, I'm going to select RD to center Drain voltage VD at 5 volts, or sorry, at 0 volts, which is the midpoint between the two supplies. Um, in order to do that, I need a 5 volt voltage drop across RD, and so VRD then is going to be equal to VDD minus, um, minus my VD that I want, which is 0 volts, or 5 volts. And therefore, my RD is going to be 5 volts divided by 0.5 milliamps, or 10 kilo ohms. And so I have 5 volts across RD, 3 volts across VDS. The remaining voltage that I have to drop across the RS resistor um, is 10 VDD, uh, VDD minus minus VSS, which is 10 volts minus those 8 volts. Uh, that is the sum of uh, VRD and VDS. So basically, VRS is equal to uh, the available supply, VDD minus minus VSS minus VRD minus VDS or 10 minus 5 minus 3 which is 2 volts. So my RS will have to be 2 volts divided by 0.5 milli or 4 kilo ohms. So I basically have the values for RD as 10 kilo ohms, RS as 4 kilo ohms. And the last thing is to select the values of my voltage divider network. So that's uh, the third and last step. I'm going to select R1 and R2 to set my gate voltage. Now remember, my VGS needs to be 3.77 volts. And I have already determined uh, what my Vs is by selecting the resistor Rs. And so my Vs is going to be equal to negative Vss plus the voltage drop across Rs, which is Id times Rs. Or it is negative 5 
plus um, 0.5 times 4k, 2 volts, or negative 3 volts. So my VG in essence has to be Vs plus VGS, right? The source voltage plus the gate to source voltage. Can I put that here? This is VG. It's got to be VGS plus Vs. That would be VG. All right, my Vs voltage is negative three volts. And my VGS is 3.77. So basically I need to have VG at 0.77 volts. Um, which means that my R1 divided by R2 is equal to the voltage drop across R1 divided by the voltage drop across R2. The voltage drop across R1 is VDD, which is 5 minus VG, which is 0.77, um, divided by 0.77 minus negative 5 or 4.23 divided by 5.77 and uh, there are multiple resistor ratios that or multiple resistors that will give me that ratio uh, but I do want to keep in mind the amount of power that gets dissipated in that voltage divided network I don't want the amount of power to be really high uh, therefore, I don't want to select resistor values that are very small, like, you know, tens of ohms or hundreds of ohms um, and have a large current and therefore a large power dissipation. So I'm going to choose how much current I want uh, in my voltage divider network. So my current in my voltage divider network, I'm going to set to be um, uh, 0 0.01 times ID or basically 10% of ID, which is 5 microamps. So with that in mind, I will have R1 will be equal to 4.23 over 5 micro, which is 846 kilo ohms, and R2 equals 5.77 over 5 micro, which is 1.15 mega ohms. Now, there was nothing in the problem statement that said uh, the voltage divided network needed to have that current. So let's imagine that you select the resistors that are, you know, slightly smaller than that or slightly larger than that. In theory, there will be nothing wrong with it. Um, in practice, you know, you typically don't want to go very high, uh, you know, past of mega ohm. Uh, if you go past tens of mega ohms, uh, it probably becomes too high of a resistor value. If you go below hundreds of ohms, it probably becomes too low of a resistor value. But anywhere within that range should be reasonable, unless we are giving a particular specification. Uh, so we have 846k and 1.15 mega ohms. And with that, we have finished. We have designed our uh, biasing network for our MOSFET transistor. Thank you.